Hello everyone and welcome back to Talking Matalkies. My name is Peter Waters and on today's video I'll be talking about all of my favorite first time watches for the month of February 2022. So I have a lot to go over today, a lot of good stuff watched this month. I have 15 movies so without wasting any time, here we go. First up is Parallel Mothers from Spanish director Pedro Almodovar, uh, multiple Academy Award winning uh, director, very well known, um, and this is his latest movie, which is nominated in two different categories this year's Oscars, one for Penelope Cruz and one for its uh, musical score. Surprisingly not nominated in foreign film though. And this movie, very similar to Almodovar's other films, uh, borrows a sort of soap opera type of style where there's a lot of melodrama and heightened emotions. This particular story is about two mothers who have a fateful meeting, very similar to the fateful meeting in Strangers on a Train. Pretty much, without them knowing it, this chance meeting uh, between these two single mothers will forever change their lives. Uh, so it's a very twist-filled movie um, with really great acting. I thought it was a well-deserved Oscar nomination for uh, Penelope Cruz. I also thought it was interesting how Almodovar sort of crisscrosses the story of new mothers uh, with Spanish history and the Spanish Civil War. So it was a really uh, great melodrama movie that I highly recommend. Recommend. All right, next up is a documentary from PBS from 2010 called Freedom Riders. This was my movie club's pick for Black History Month. And this was about the Freedom Riders, who were basically a group of um, interracial uh, civil rights activists who boarded a bus and took it to the Deep South, where they were segregated. So they were making a statement, and there were very intense, deadly results. Um, so this was a really well-produced documentary. It does a great job outlining this historical event and the sort of tragedy that befell a lot of the people and the brave souls who went on this uh, trip, uh, on this bus. And in fact, the director of this, Stanley Nelson, is also nominated at this year's Oscars for the movie Attica, which I still need to see. I'll be watching that within the next couple of days. Uh, so yeah, Freedom Riders, highly recommended recommended documentary. All right, my next movie is bringing uh, the classy factor all the way down with Jackass Forever, uh, the latest in the Jackass movie series. Um, and pretty much this is 20 years after they released their first film. And they are doing just as stupid uh, stunts and pranks on each other. Uh, they haven't really uh, grown or changed whatsoever besides the scale of their endeavors. And uh, pretty much these people are, I think, uh, the next evolution of stuntmen like Evil Knievel or Buster Keaton. The best way to watch this movie is definitely in a crowded theater because you will see things that you cannot unsee in this film. Uh, there are some really shocking moments, and I don't think I've laughed harder at a movie in a very long time. So uh, it will make you cringe, it will make you laugh, um, and it will make you nostalgic for um, all those other jackass movies over 20 years. So I recommend that one uh, if you want to witness grown men going through increasingly disturbing trials of pain endurance. It's a good watch. All right, next up is an Italian comedy horror movie from 1994 called Cemetery Man. Um, now, this is a movie that reminded me a lot of one of my all-time favorite movies, Dead Alive by Peter Jackson. Uh, this one is about this sort of custodian guy at a uh, cemetery, and he has a very Igor-like mute assistant with him, and they are pretty much trying to deal with uh, pesky zombies who keep you know, emerging from the graves and they're trying to figure out how to stop zombies from uh, rising. Um, it's this really, really over-the-top, gory, insane, wild ride that uh, mere words cannot do justice. Uh, you kind of have to see it to believe it. Um, so this was a really energetic, cartoonish, crazy, gory movie uh, that I happen to really enjoy. So check that one out if you're a horror fan. It's kind of a hidden gem, I would say. All right, next up is my pick of the month. It's the first three seasons of HBO's Succession. Uh, so this show recently won the SAG Award for Best Ensemble in a Series, and I think it's one of the best written shows I think I've ever seen. The dialogue is so sharp. The premise of the show is pretty much, if you imagine Game of Thrones, but set in the world of like the 1% of 
uh, the business world. Uh, it follows this family and they're all, all the children are trying to uh, win out that top spot after their dad, you know, either retires or passes away. And they're all very snarky and cutthroat and trying to sabotage each other secretly and the alliances continue to shift. And it really is like Game of Thrones and I found it highly enjoyable. Um, all of the actors in it are fantastic, even though they're playing characters who are utterly despicable. It's kind of fun to see them, like, rise and fall and rise again and fall again. So I truly think this is one of the best shows on TV currently. It's my pick of the month. I highly recommend checking it out. All right, next up is another documentary. This one is from Netflix called What Happened Miss Simone. This was an early Netflix original movie from 2015. And this is pretty much all about the legendary uh, rock and roll Hall of Fame inductee Nina Simone um, and her life story and pretty much how terrible it was. It's very similar to other, uh, you know, musician stories, unfortunately, like uh, the Tina Turner HBO documentary recently, or the Whitney Houston documentary from recent uh, memory. Um, it's pretty much just shows how uh, tough her life was uh, in her rise and how her, you know, uh, personal relationships were awful. And then she suffered from bipolar disorder um, and also showed how revolutionary she was in her uh, field of music, singing about, you know, uh, things that no one dared sing about back then. Uh, so it was a really uh, well put together documentary. If you know nothing about Nina Simone, it's a good place to start with her music. All right, my next movie is also nominated for two Academy Awards uh, this year for both uh, Best Foreign Language Film for Norway as well as Best Original Screenplay, and it's called The Worst Person in the World. And pretty much what this movie is, it's about this uh, woman who just turned 30 and sort of the indecisive place she is in life. She doesn't really know what she wants to do with herself. Um, and we follow her relationships and her uh, work and things like that, and she's not sure what to do. Um, so it sounds kind of mundane, but the way this movie was written really pinpoints uh, something very human and truthful about uh, life, I would say. It reminded me a lot of Richard Linklater's Before Trilogy, which are pretty much just all conversations, hour and a half long conversations for a movie, and it's riveting. Uh, similarly, this movie, if you just read about what it's about, it's uh, not really that thrilling of a story. It's just a woman going through sort of a uh, self-crisis, but uh, the way uh, it unfolds, the way it cinematically uh, brings to life some of these ideas. There's one dream sequence in the movie that's probably one of the best I've seen in a very long time. Uh, it just was very well produced and well made. So I highly recommend checking this out. I'm sure that it will eventually uh, have an American remake version uh, because it's just a very strong film. My next pick is Steven Soderbergh's latest film called Kimmy that was recently released to HBO Max. And this movie is kind of like a cross between Alfred Hitchcock's Rear Window and Black Mirror. It's sort of a sci-fi spin on uh, the person maybe witnessing or hearing a murder and they're sort of isolated in their apartment. In this case, it's because uh, this woman who's like a tech worker, she overhears uh, what might have been a um, an assault on uh, a sort of like a Alexa type device um, where she tries to go in and update the system. She hears what could be a murder, but when she tries to report it, um, all the higher ups in the tech companies tried to sweep it under the rug and silence her by any means necessary. So it's this very tense thriller. Uh, Steven Soderbergh is such a great director. I love the camera work in this. It was, uh, it's, the camera sort of mirrors her unstable personality when things get really tough. Uh, I just thought this was a great movie. So far, it's my favorite film of 2022. Even though we're only two months in and we haven't had a lot of movies so far, it is uh, a great film, I would say. And it currently has a place on my top 10 of the year. All right, next up is a four episode docu-series from Showtime called We Need to Talk About Cosby that was just recently released by comedian and uh, cultural commentator w, w. Kamau Bell. And pretty much this documents the life and uh, very heinous acts of comedian Bill Cosby, who I used to be a huge fan of and I think I, along with a bunch of other fans, uh, it was kind of 
horrifying to hear that someone that you held in such high regard was a monster behind the scenes. Uh, he would drug and rape women, basically. And this documentary uh, interviews a lot of the women who were uh, victims of him and some of the people involved in his uh, rise and his career. It was this really fascinating look at this completely contradictory man who on one hand sort of uh, was a huge value to um, society. He was called America's Dad, and he did a lot of great things, including uh, he was one of the first people to bring black stunt people onto uh, TV and movie sets. Literally before Cosby did that, they would put white people in blackface to have stunt doubles in the movies. Um, so while he did a lot uh, for the entertainment industry that was good, he also did a lot of horrific things, and this documentary does a really great job uh, sort of grappling with that idea of, like, how can we, you know, uh, deal with those two things being true. Uh, so I thought that was a really good docuseries. I highly recommend it. It's on Showtime. All right, next up is another uh, sort of crime documentary. This one hit it big on Netflix recently. It's called The Tinder Swindler, and this one is about a guy who basically tricked these uh, women into believing he was this multi-millionaire uh, in this jewelry business and he basically scammed them out of all their money um, and they were very naive and it's kind of unbelievable to me that these women didn't know that he was a con man he seemed very obvious to me uh, in hindsight but he manipulated their emotions and it's a very interesting uh, true crime story uh, for sure a sort of showing how predatory uh, some people can be um, through technology. So I highly recommend that one as well, The Tinder Swindler, now on Netflix. All right, my next pick is Cyrano. Uh, this is the adaptation of Cyrano de Bergerac, uh, but it's a musical version from Joe Wright, who has done such great movies as um, Atonement and Hannah, and he did the uh, Kira Knightley version of Pride and Prejudice. Uh, so he's no stranger to adapting other people's works. And this one basically stars Peter Dinklage in the role of Cyrano. Um, he's from Game of Thrones, of course, and uh, he has an unrequited love. Uh, he uh, is this really great wordsmith, and he writes these love poems for his more attractive friend uh, for the girl that he is in love with. So we have this love triangle going on. It's this classic story that has been adapted many times, but uh, I really appreciated uh, how they t spun this in a new direction, even though uh, Peter Dinklage himself does not really have a good singing voice at all. It kind of doesn't matter at the end of the day because his acting w was enough to compensate, at least in my mind, for some of his not great singing. Um, this movie is also nominated for Best Costume Design at the Oscars this year, and I thought the set design and just overall look of this was amazing. Um, so I highly recommend Cyrano. Uh, it's another great adaptation of this story. All right, next up is another HBO uh, series called The White Lotus. Um, and this one was recently on the American Film Institute's top 10 TV shows of last year. Um, and this one is pretty much very similar to A Parasite. It is about a... Uh, Hawaiian resort, very uh, expensive, fancy, glamorous resort. And the show kind of contrasts the uh, workers at this hotel, the native people who originally lived there that are kind of driven out, um, as well as the like 1% elite uh, people who can afford to stay there. Um, and it's very funny in times, it's very tense at times, and basically things keep bubbling, uh, and you know something bad is eventually going to happen, um, and it's just sort of waiting to see, um, what happens. So I thought this was a very well-acted series. Um, I definitely recommend it if you're into sort of eat-the-rich narratives, uh, sort of poking fun at, uh, very out-of-touch, uh, rich people, um, I thought it was a really well-written, smart, darkly funny show. All right, my next pick is called From Beyond. This is from 1986, and this is a sci-fi horror adaptation of H.P. Lovecraft's story by Stuart Gordon, who also adapted Lovecraft with uh, the very uh, popular cult hit Reanimator, and this movie brings back two of the actors from Reanimator, Jeffrey Combs as this sort of mad scientist and his uh, 
uh, new assistant uh, played by Barbara Crampton. And pretty much he has this device that accidentally unleashes these monsters from another dimension. And the whole thing is one big excuse to have some amazingly uh, slimy, gory uh, special effects um, that completely blew my mind. I thought that uh, this had equivalent uh, special effects, maybe one notch below uh, John Carpenter's The Thing. It was very gross and I loved it. It's definitely a B-movie. Um, it's very simple story uh, of science gone wrong, but the uh, way in which they brought these creatures to life, um, I thought was entertaining. So maybe not a movie for everybody, but from beyond, for you horror nerds out there, definitely don't let that one slip you by. Next up is Inventing Anna, uh, which also came out this year. This is a Netflix miniseries all about Anna Delvey. Uh, she's played by Julia Garner uh, from Ozark, and she is this sort of... Uh, social media influencer and she basically pretended to be this rich socialite and she faked it until she ma made it um scamming again tons of people uh out of all their money um you know basically borrowing money from here to pay there and she worked her way up uh the sort of elite uh socialite ladder of new york city uh so similar to a tin tinder swindler it's sort of the rise and fall of this person who, um, you know, swindled a ton of people out of their money. So on one hand, you kind of can't help but be impressed by her. But on the other hand, uh, you know, obviously, um, she's a criminal. Um, so this is based on a true story, and uh, it's from Shonda Rhimes. So I thought it was a little bit overlong. I thought... Um, Julia Garner's accent took a little bit getting used to. She kind of sounds like Tommy Wiseau from The Room. It's a very muddled, like, European accent. But once I got over that, I thought the uh, story behind it was really interesting. Um, and just the idea that she was able to scam uh, some of the, you know, big people, movers and shakers in uh, the New York uh, scene there, I thought was uh, really interesting. So I recommend Inventing Anna, even though you know, I can see why some people might not like it as much. All right, and my final pick of the month is The Times of Harvey Milk. This is a classic documentary from 1984, um, and it's all about the uh, famous Californian politician who was unfortunately assassinated by Dan White, presumably because he was one of the first um, out gay people to uh, be in public office. And uh, also Dan White famous for uh, his defense at his trial, uh, claiming the Twinkie defense, uh, s sort of blaming sugary foods and drinks uh, in a weird way, that, uh, showing that he had lost his mind. He pleaded insanity because they uh, said he was eating Twinkies. So a little bit of a stretch there. Um, th but this was a fantastic documentary narrated by Harvey Firestein, And it pretty much rolls out... Uh, uh, Harvey Milk's life in this very interesting way. Um, the way it's edited uh, definitely does a good job summarizing this uh, sort of complicated story for like regular people. So uh, I highly recommend that one as well. So that wraps up all of my recommendations for February. Um, I know it's a lot, but hopefully uh, one of those sparks your interest and maybe I've influenced you to check out something new. So in the future, look forward to my Oscar predictions for next year. Uh, but uh, until then, I'll see you next time.